Hello, and welcome back to the continuing story of Ricky Tiki Tavi. And here's our friend, Ricky Tiki, or Ricky Tiki Tavi. And when we last left off with our story, we had talked about how Ricky Tiki had taken care of one of the snakes, but what about the one that remained? What is going to happen? Well, Without waiting for breakfast, Ricky Tiki ran to the thorn bush where Darcy was singing a song of triumph at the top of his voice. The news of Nag's death was all over the garden, for the sweeper had thrown the body on the rubbish heap. Oh, you stupid tuft of feathers, said Ricky Tiki angrily. Is this the time to sing? Nag is dead, is dead, is dead sang Darcy. The valiant Ricky Tiki caught him by the head and held fast. The big man brought the bang stick and nag fell into pieces. He will never eat my babies again. All that's true enough, but where's Nigaina? said Ricky Tiki, looking carefully around Tim. There he is looking. Nigaina came to the bathroom sluice and called for nag. Darcy went on, and Nag came out on the end of the stick. The sweeper picked him up on the end of a stick and threw him upon the rubbish heap. Let us sing about the red, the red-eyed Ricky Ticky. You don't know when to do the right thing at the right time. You're safe enough if your nest's there. But it's war for me down here. Stop singing a minute, Darcy. For the great, the beautiful, Ricky Ticky's sake, I will stop, said Darcy. What is it, O oh killer of the terrible nag? Where is Nagaina the third time? On the rubbish heap. On the rubbish heap by the stables, mourning for nag. Great is Ricky Ticky with the white teeth. Bother my white teeth. Have you ever heard where she keeps her eggs? In the melon bed, on the end nearest the wall, where the sun strikes nearly all day. She had them there weeks ago. And you never thought it worth while to tell me. The end nearest the wall, you said. Ricky Ticky, you are not going to eat her eggs. Not eat, not eat exactly, no. Darcy, if you, have a great, if you have a grain of sense, you will fly off to the stables and pretend that your wing is broken, and let Nagaina chase you away to this bush. I must get the melon bed, and if I went there now, she'd see me. Darcy was a feather-brained little fellow who could never hold more than one idea at a time in his head, and just because he knew that Nagaina's children were born in eggs like his own, he didn't think at first that it was fair to kill them. But his wife was a sensible bird and she knew that cobra's eggs meant young cobras later on. So she flew off from the nest and left Darcy to keep the babies warm and continued his song about the death of Nag. Darcy was very like a man in some ways. She fluttered in front of Nagaina by the rubbish heap and cried out, oh, my wig is broken. The boy in the house threw a stone at me and broke it. And she fluttered more desperately than ever. Here's the boy in the house. Nagaina lifted up her head and hissed. You warned Ricky Ticky when I would have killed him. Indeed, a true, indeed and truly, you've chosen a bad place to be lame. And she moved toward Darcy's wipe, slipping along over the dust. The boy broke it with a stone, shrieked Darcy's wife. Well, it may be some consolation to you when you're dead to know that I shall settle accounts by, with the boy. My husband lies on the rubbish heap this morning, but before night, the boy in the house will lie very still. What is the use of running away? I am sure to catch you, little fool. Look at me. Darcy's wife knew better than to do that, for a bird who looks at a snake's eyes gets so frightened that she cannot move. Darcy's wife fluttered on, piping sorrowfully and never leaving the ground, 
and Nagaina quickened her pace. Rikki Tikki heard them going up the path from the stables, and he raced to the end of the melon patch near the wall. There, in the warm litter above the melons, very cunningly hidden, he found twenty-five eggs, about the size of a, a bantam's eggs, but with whitish skin instead of shell. I was not a day too soon, he said, for he could see the baby cobras curled up inside the skin, and he knew that the minute they were hatched, they could each kill a man or a mongoose. He bit off the tops of the eggs as fast as he could, taking care to crush the young cobras, and turned over the little, the litter from time to time to see whether he had missed any. At last, there were only three eggs left. And Ricky Ticky began to chuckle to himself when he heard Darcy's wife screaming. There he is, checking out the eggs. Ricky Ticky, I led Nagana toward the house and she has gone into the veranda and oh, come quickly, she means killing. Ricky Ticky smashed two eggs and tumbled backward down the melon bed with the third egg in his mouth and scuttled to the veranda as hard as he could, put forth to the ground. Teddy and his mother and father were there at the early breakfast table. But Ricky Ticky saw that they were not eating anything. They sat stone still. Stone still, and their faces were white. Nagaina was coiled up, up at the matting by Teddy's chair, then easy striking distance of Teddy's bare leg, and she was swaying to and fro singing in a song of triumph. Son of the big man that killed Nag, she hissed, stay still. I am not ready yet. Wait a little. Keep very still, all you three. If you move, I strike, and if you do not move, I strike. Oh, foolish people, you kill my nag. Teddy's eyes were fixed on his father, and all his father could do was to whisper, sit still, Teddy, sit still. You mustn't move, Teddy, keep still. Then Ricky Ticky came up and cried, Turn round, Nagaina, turn and fight. All in good time, said she, without moving her eyes. I will settle my account with you presently. Look at your friends, Ricky Ticky. They are still and white. They are afraid. They dare not move. And if you come a step nearer, I strike. Look at your egg, said Ricky Ticky in the melon bed near the wall. Go and look, Nagaina. The big snake turned half round and saw the egg on the veranda. Oh, give it to me, she said. She saw that he has an egg. Ricky Ticky put his paws, one on each side of the egg, and his eyes were blood red. What price for a snake's egg, for a young cobra, for a young king cobra, for the last, the very last of the brood. The ants are eating all the others down by the melon bed. Nikaina spun clear round, forgetting everything for the sake of her one egg. And Ricky Ticky saw Teddy's father shoot out a big hand, catch Teddy by the shoulder, and drag him across the little table with the teacups safe out of reach of Nikaina. Tricked, 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 Ricky Ticky, -tick, chuckled Ricky Ticky. The boy is safe, and it was I, I, I that caught Nag by the hood last night in the bathroom. Then he began to jump up and down all four feet together, his head close to the floor. He threw me to and fro, but he could not shake me off. He was dead before the big man blew him a fight with me. Come, you fight with me. You shall not be a widow long. Nagaina saw that she had lost her chance of killing Teddy, and the egg lay between Ricky Ticky's paws. Give me the egg, Ricky Ticky. Give me the last of my eggs, and I will go away and never come back, she said, lowering her hood. Yes, you will go away, and you will never come back, for you will go to the rubbish heap with Nag. Fight, widow, 
The big man has gone for his gun. Fight. Here they are still talking. Ricky Tiki was bounding all over Nagaina, keeping just out of reach of her stroke. His little eyes like hot coals. Nagaina gathered herself together and flung out at him. Ricky Tiki jumped up and backward. Again and again and again she struck, and each time her head came with a whack at the matting of the veranda. And she gathered herself together like a watch spring. Then Ricky Tiki danced in a circle to get behind her. And Nagaina spun round to keep her head, his head, so that the rustle of her tail on the matting sounded like dry leaves blown along by the wind. He had forgotten the egg. It still lay on the veranda, and Nagaina came nearer and nearer to it till at last, while Ricky Tiki was drawing breath, she caught it in her mouth, turned to the veranda steps, and flew like an arrow down the path with Ricky Tiki behind her. When the cobra runs for her life, she goes like a whiplash flicked across a horse's neck. Ricky Tiki knew that he must catch her, or all the trouble would begin again. She headed straight for the long grass by the thorn bush, and as he was running, Ricky Tiki heard Darcy still singing his foolish little song of triumph. But Darcy's wife was wiser. She flew off her nest as Nagaina came along and flapped her wings about Nagaina's head. If Darcy had helped, they might have turned her. But Nagaina only lowered her hood and went on. Still, the instant delay brought Ricky Tiki up to her. Still, the instant's delay brought Ricky Tiki closer. And as she plunged into the rat hole where she and Nag used to live, his little white teeth were clenched on her tail. And he went down with her in very few mongoes and very few mongooses however wise and old they may be, care to follow a cobra into its hole. It was dark in the hole, and Ricky Tiki never knew when it might open up and out and give Nagain a room to turn and strike at him. He held on savagely and struck out his teeth to act as brakes on the dark slope of the hot, moist earth. Then the grass by the mouth of the hole stopped waving, and Darcy said, It is all over with Ricky Tiki. We must sing the death song. Valiant Ricky Tiki is dead. For Nagaina will surely kill him underground. So he sang a very mournful song that he made up all on the spur of the minute. And just as he got to the most touching part, the grass quivered again. And Ricky Tiki, covered with dirt, dragged himself out of the hole, leg by leg, licking his whiskers. Darcy stopped with a little shout. Ricky Tiki shook some of the dust out of the fur and sneezed. It is all over, he said. The widow will never come out again. And the red ants that lived between the grass stems heard him and began to troop down one after another to see if he had spoken the truth. Ricky Tiki curled himself up in the grass and slept where he was. Slept and slept it was late in the afternoon where he had done a hard day's work. Now, he said, when he woke, I will go back to the house, tell the coppersmith, Darcy, and he will tell the garden that Nagina is dead. The coppersmith is a bird who makes a noise exactly like the beating of a little hammer on a copper pot. And the reason he is always making it is because he is the town crier to every Indian garden and tells all the news to everybody who cares to listen. As Ricky Tiki went up the path, he heard his attention notes like a tiny dinner gong and then the steady ding dong talk. Nag is dead. Dong. Nagaina is dead. Ding dong talk. That set all the birds in the garden singing and the frogs croaking. For Nag and Nagaina used to eat frogs as well as little birds. When Ricky got to the house, Teddy and Teddy's mothers, she looked very white still for she had been fainting, 
and Teddy's father came out and almost cried over him. There they are. That night, he ate all that was given to him till he could eat no more and went to bed on Teddy's shoulder. For Teddy's mother saw him when she came to look at him at night. He saved our lives and Teddy's life, she said to her husband. Just think, he saved all our lives. Ricky Ticky woke up with a jump for all the mongooses are light sleepers. Oh, it's you, said he. What are you bothering for? All the cobras are dead, and if you and if they weren't, I'm here. Ricky Ticky had a right to be proud of himself, but he did not grow too proud, and he kept the gut that garden as a mongoose should keep it, with tooth and jump and spring and bite, till never a cobra dared showed its head inside the walls. And there you see it, a picture of Ricky Ticky, a, a phenomenal picture that really describes the story of love and protection, both of a, of a young boy and a little mongoose who protected them from the great cobras there where they lived. And truly, they did live happily ever after. I well, hope you enjoyed this story and uh, hope you will like the videos of this series on the story of Riggy Tiki Toffee by Rudyard Kipling.